Hey everybody, it's Liquid Lunch coming at you live on a Friday. It's actually a beautiful day in downtown today. It's sunny, it's a little chilly, but the chill doesn't even uh, hurt. I, and our first guest is Diane Fine. And you walked here all the way from King and... Uh, Berkeley, right? yes. Yes, it was delightful. Wasn't it? With my portfolio full of all my artwork, so... And it wasn't even that... And your elevator's not working, so it's exciting I know. to make it up here. It is that okay? Even I feel great now. I'm very well rested. Yeah. Yeah, I feel exhilarated. Okay, cool. So um, we've got you here. We're going to talk about your artwork and stuff. And uh, actually, we were chatting just before we came on um, that you're originally from Montreal. And, yes. Uh, and now. <laughs> A very artistic city. Yeah. And uh, people there just emanate creativity and their dress and their food and their ambiance and just everything about it yeah. excites me and I'd like to transplant that into Toronto one yeah. man show Is could it? be a few more people involved well we're gonna we're gonna have a show coming up in a little bit but I mean you were you were saying how um, something must happen to people on the 401 when they I come know from I don't know if it happens at Belleville or what's what <laughs> town that people transform into sort of the narrow vision of uh, not just being themselves and relaxing. There's some, something i a bit uptight about, I guess, is the money-making emphasis. And uh, there's no free time to sort of fool around and play and enjoy the finer things of life, like culture. Yeah. Culture is, is, yeah, well is what makes us human, really. <coughs> it's true, but every city has their own kind of spirit to it, right? Yes, and, yes. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Toronto's definitely a city where people come to work, mm -hmm. right? They come mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more than to play, say. In Montreal, mm -hmm. I mean, we know why. I mean, pr the, the French culture, the long history, just, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the French people, I, I don't know, it's some pas joie de vivre. It's a but different you know, language. Yeah. It's a different mental operating system somehow. But there are a lot of fran francophones living here, and there's so many Montrealers living here. Yeah. Um, where are they living? I'd like to find them. Mississauga. <laughs> Mississauga. <laughs> well, yeah. No, but Toronto is coming into its own, I, I must say. It is yeah. starting to pay attention to more, a little bit more to architecture, to parks, to visuals visuals that make you feel good when you're walking down the streets that's very important yeah my husband wants to when he takes to takes a walk he has to plan his route uh according to what exhilarates him and sometimes it can be a challenge you mean in toronto in toronto, to in toronto. the nice architecture the nice yeah views. parks architecture um yeah that kind of thing are you okay with the some of the new architecture that's going in uh the wilder the better I mean, and gray is not my favorite color. Well, gray no. and cement, and no, that. Go but for red and lime green, or something interesting that lifts you. Yeah, I mean, with some of the new stuff. I was just down on uh, Queens Key the other day. Yeah. And you know that they've got those new condos right on the lakeshore there. Yeah. And they're like they yeah. got big blocks, kind of. Exactly. Placed higgledy exactly. piggledy on top of them and stuff yep. like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, they ha and Montreal had Habitat how many years ago? Well, Habitat was very cool. Yeah, why couldn't we have a Habitat about 60 years later? Yeah. yeah. Well, anyhow. Anyhow. So we're going to get into some of the work that you do. Yes. Because um, you're a, a... How would you describe yourself? A uh, visual artist. Like a painter, primarily? Painter, a I... Anything to do with hands... Yeah. And eyes. Like sculpture? Sculpture, I've done everything. Uh, printmaking, uh, uh, painting, uh, co copper enamel cloisonne. This is a pin I made when I was going through my copper enameling phase in life. Um, and I've done a lot of representational work. Now I'm doing mostly abstract. Mm -hmm. For the last couple of years, concentrating on abstract. Um, now, we're going to see some of these in a couple of minutes, but did you start, uh, w have you always been doing this, like, uh, from... Since, uh, as far as I can remember, uh, the best thing my parents could ever buy me were crayons, yeah. and probably the best thing my husband could ever buy me would be some colored pencils. Yeah. 
I haven't changed much yeah. in my joy of using medium and trying to figure out what to do with it. As a matter of fact, in one of the pictures, um, I was with one of my granddaughters last weekend and I wanted her to do a drawing with colored pencils and we didn't have an electric sharpener and so we had one of those tiny little sharpeners then hand held and it was like really fantastic exercise for my wrist. I had to sharpen all the pencils. By the end they had a huge pile of pencil shavings and I created a piece out of pencil shavings. So that's one of the pieces I'm showing you. This is the kind of thing like I think you can make art out of everything. You don't have to go just to the art store. Yeah. to create something original. You can use found art. I mean, the great artists all did, like Picasso made, uh, you know, uh, cow's heads out or bull's heads out of a bicycle seat and bars. Um, you can b just use your imagination. And that's basically what I love to do. You know, I didn't like those little pencil sharpeners because the point was always... I like the ones yeah. where you went like this. Yeah. Right, I got one in the kitchen. I'll show you afterwards. Okay. And if there's any shavings in there. Save them. Really? You never know what you can do. You can become a great artist. <laughs> so let's look at some of your things now. You can point out the ones that's got the pencil shavings in Oh, it. okay. Okay, so yeah. uh, let's look at... Uh, now okay. that one was, I call it the United Nations because it reminds me of flags. It's a collage and it's made from an unsuccessful piece that I cut up into little squares. Mm -hmm. And then I placed it so that because it looks to me like emblems that fla of flags and whatnot that sort of meld into each other. Um, and if you see them, you know, close up, they're 3D. They stand off. They're on a, a wood mount. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, they're that was fun to do. So and it's yeah. a, that's a pretty big piece as well. Yeah, that's pretty big. Like how big that's is pretty that? big. About, uh, 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 two and a half feet by like three that. feet or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's gr I mean, it really stands out. The color. Yeah. Just because that's just against our set here, and look how bright and uh, cheery it is. Well, compared that's to the background. you know what that pretty much defines me. I'm <laughs> all about color, even though I'm wearing a brown jacket. You know, I'm I'm wearing a, a, you got purple, going a on. purple a purple shirt, um, but color to me is life is life affirming. And why go for the drab colors when you can choose the bright, happy ones? Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. So let's look at the. Uh, now, if you could see that a bit more closely, I don't know if you can zoom in on that. I, I don't know if we can. Um, uh, those are the pencil shavings. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, and as I said, this was such a great little sharpener that it kept the shavings intact, so I had like a whole oh. circle. Yeah, did you have to be careful? With I them? had to be very careful placing them on the board. Yeah. That was the sketch board for the uh, pad that I grabbed because it had to be glued onto something solid. So yes, that's what, what that is. And then I added colored pencil in as well. Um, you know, I, I want to ask you, can, I, can we just go back to the last piece for a mm -hmm. sec? I have a question about that one. Yep. Now, the, the pieces that you cut, you're saying from a work that was unsuccessful. Now, what do you mean, what makes it unsuccessful enough that you're willing to uh, cut it off? Unsuccessful means I'm not happy with the, the, the yeah. how it's resolved. Yeah. There's something wrong with the composition. Maybe parts of it work, but other parts don't. Mm. So what an artist can do is they can always crop parts that work or use... There are mistakes. I mean, mistakes are very important in art. Accidents are very important in art because they, they bring something new to the table. And if you're open to working with different things and not saying, well, this was not resolved, I'm going to chuck it. No, I, no, parts of it worked and parts of it didn't. And what if I did this and that with it? And, and then you turn it into a success, and I think that's what life is too. Mm -hmm. We all make mistakes, mm -hmm. but we have to come out of them and learn and do something with those mistakes. Maybe right? we should change so. our policy around here, our no mistake policy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's make more mistakes. <laughs> no, let's not. <laughs> but anyway, that is okay. important because uh, yep. I get that uh, too. Uh, in, uh, like I do music more than art, visual arts, and, and mm -hmm. that's where the new, that's where songs come from. Yep. Something new. It's like exactly. something that, oh, that actually sounds good. Exactly. Or there you go. Are you case, fooling right? around and oh. Yeah, yeah. Fooling improv. around. It's That's improv. It comes. Improv. You get too improv. serious about it. Uh, uh, maybe we'll, we'll keep looking at the things, but yeah, yeah. Um, 
let's go to the third one. And let's uh, intersperse that with shots of us talking too, please, uh, Joseph. So this, um, one here. this one is a more traditional one that I did when I was living in England, and I fell in love with the countryside. And the natural thing to do is when you're an artist, you react to your environment, and um, you paint what moves you. And for me, the landscape and the gardens move me tremendously. I started doing all kinds of still lives of uh, flowers because everybody has the most magnificent garden there. And then the landscape is just one huge patchwork quilt. Mm. Uh, and it's just uh, because most of the trees have been cut down for shipbuilding like centuries ago, um, all you have is these beautiful horizons and landscapes um, that are divided by the farmers and lots of them are, have sheep grazing on them or whatever. It's, it's sort of the most charming, charming thing. Now, whereabouts were you in, uh, in, in Britain? I was in the Cotswolds, which is uh, north of Toronto, a very popular area. You mean London? North, <laughs> north of <laughs> London, excuse me. Um, Northwest of London, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. And did, was that the view out your cottage? Or? No, it was probably a view on one of the footpaths. I even think, actually, I know where that view was. Yeah. 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 How, how did that landscape affect you compared to the landscapes that we get here in Canada? They're tame. They're, there's they're something, tame. Yeah. The, the ones there are very, on a human scale because they're small. Here it's all majestic mountains and it's, you're aw, in awe of things. There you feel cozy. Mm in an environment. Mm. You don't feel threatened. Mm -hmm. They don't have the animals. They don't have the bugs. Mm -hmm. You're not fending yourself through the woods. Everything's <laughs> managed and everything's orderly. Yeah. And their footpaths everywhere and they're marked. And it's not like the wildness yeah. that we have here. Probably a nice place to sip some tea. Well, a lot of people do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, let's have another look at uh, the next one. we got quite a few to, to look at. That one is representative of, of the abstracts I'm doing. For the last year, I've been doing uh, spirals. Now, my friends say, uh, and family say, Mom, I think you're spiraling out of control because I'm doing so many spirals, and there's so many versions that you can do. It's endless. Um, it's one of the seven patterns of the universe, and I've always been fascinated by that. Um, and so I've done modern interpretations of spirals and on wood mounts. And in one case, I did about, I must have done about 100 of them by now. And the, these, most of them are 8 by 8s That one's a little bit bigger. But my vision was that you would put them on one wall as if they were one piece. And there's only about, say, half to uh, three quarters of an inch between all of them. So it's like variations on a theme. Mm -hmm. And it's just fantastic to see them. The colors are stupendous, um, and they they just buzz. They yeah, just like bring that life. One, that one too. It's got the. Um, I mean, let's look at it again. The colors here, but also the um, the finish of it. I. It's not glass. It's like no, it's resin. Yeah, it's like resin. Well, that's yeah. why you've got that bit of glare on the camera. Yeah. But the resin protects it, and it's it's like a kitchen top. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's indestructible, mm -hmm. uh, and it resolves the problem of frames and glass. Mm -hmm. um, there's not as much glare as there is with glass. I don't have to buy a frame. And I think for that modern approach, it has to be sleek and simple. I don't want to have be bothered with frames for all these. And then they fit together so nicely on a wall, and the idea being that you can arrange them in your home to fit the space you have. So if you have a corridor, you put them in a line, you can have, put them in any way, and, and that's fantastic for condos, for mm. people who don't, you know, have limited space, mm. and they don't know what, they have to buy a picture to fit that space. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I always thought, you know, why not have lots of little pieces yeah. and give the buyer a little bit of creativity in how they arrange them? Right. Because I didn't put wires on the back. You can put them any in any direction, hang them any way you want, yeah. and then also hang them on the wall any way you want. So, well, Sounds like a great thing to do. And yeah. you can keep adding to it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Say exactly. Every year somebody can give you a new one for Christmas. And Absolutely. You can Buy them by the dozens. Yeah. Okay. What else What else do we have to look I at? I think here? there's one more. Or maybe... I think there's more. No, there's two more. Two more. All right. Well, we're waiting for uh, Joseph.
Joseph to get it up there. But you're going to be doing the Ra show coming up, too. I right? am. Uh, okay, yeah. here we go. Um, this is a, a, actually a picture of a huge needlepoint that I did called uh, Persona Grata. And uh, you can't really see the quality and the texture of that piece, um, but that doesn't matter. The idea was that I took an IKEA frame and I decorated it in a collage format with painted uh, paper, acrylic painted paper, cut and placed in, an, in a pattern. And, so is this uh, a photograph of a larger? It's a, and the, the photograph is of a, a very, very large needlepoint that oh, I did. Okay. Um, so that's another medium that I've used, lots of, of uh, needlework. I started a rye rug when I was first married. We didn't have any furniture. And I didn't buy a kit because there's no way I was going to spend all that time doing somebody else's design. So I ordered tons of wool, hoping that I'd have enough wool to, to finish the rug. And of course, it was way too much. And I said, what can I do with all this expensive wool? And I made another rug, and then I made another rug. And then I decided, well, OK, I'm going to have to do something, make pillows. And then I made tons of pillows. We had too many pillows. And so that turned into paintings, needlepoint paintings. Nice. All right, and uh, one more, I think, right? Yeah, Joseph there's the last one. That's my box here, my box face. Um, I visited a friend in North Carolina who is teaching art, and she was using cigar boxes. Um, and of course, we had a lot greater selection here because we were friendly with Cuba and et cetera, so we got all kinds of cigar boxes here. So I used to hang around cigar stores and live off of other people's bad habits. and. Um, and create collages with the concept that why can't you have art on your table uh, and put all your clutter and garbage in this box yeah. and have a nice beautiful thing on your table. So you, instead of hanging the art on the wall, you'd have it on your table. A little bit of functionality too. Yeah, yeah, I believe in functionality yeah. for sure. Yeah, me too. Um, and now, I don't know if you've been to Dollarama lately, but they've got those I, yeah, wooden boy. boxes. I know. Right? Anybody could do these things, you know. I don't have a monopoly on this. Yeah. Anybody could go and buy a lot of these wood objects and decorate them in all sorts of ways. Yeah. But Dollaramas, they got them. They're wood. Yeah, They're yeah. just unfinished wood. I know. It's, it's really amazing. Cool. Yeah. So, um, now what are you working on these days? I know you do, we're doing the show, the Raw show, 15th I'm, and 16th, right? I'm just on the there on the 15th. Okay. So are you going to have a uh, table or a, how does I'm that work? I'm going to have, well, they give you a space. Uh, mine is 10 by 6 feet. And I just bring, bring my work. Um, it's going to be mostly recent work, modern, abstract work. Uh, smaller panels that people can arrange in different ways in their, in like their houses. Like those spirals, something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I think that might be my favorite of the Oh, really? So just oh, that's great. I like, the, I like the finish to it and the, ah. the resin or whatever that is, and it looks so, it's almost like pure color, right? You don't, the material doesn't really... Um, it kind of fuses. It yeah. fuses with the piece. It's part of the piece. Yeah. And, and that's what I love about it. And, and the resin goes all the way around the whole thing, so it's an entity, you know? It's just yeah. really sleek. So hope, hope you'll have a few of those things. I will. I hope to see you there. And um, are you showing anywhere, uh, or I'm do you showing have your in, own studio or something? Uh, well, I have my own studio. Um, I'm showing at the Strzok Gallery, and uh, I show in various places. I used to show quite a bit in England, um, and I've shown at galleries on Queen Street and, and, you know, try to keep my work out there as much as possible. Yeah. Now, and do you have a website or something? Yes, it's, it's Diane Fine Art. Oh yeah, I forgot. Dot C A. <laughs> Di my Nobody name is Diane that. Fine, and the website is www.dianefineart.ca. So people can go there, check out your works. That's the easiest because I have so many genres. Yeah. That uh, they can get a much better uh, overview of what I've produced. Okay. Well, cool. It's been great to have you here. Have Thanks this so much. Nice to Thank meet you. Thank you. Same here. All the best, and we'll probably okay. see you on the fifteenth. Okay. All That's right. great. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to take a little break. We've got lots more coming up here on uh, Liquid Lunch on a Friday. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back to thatchannel.com.